What is going on guys? This is Jake at That Fit Friend and today we're going to be comparing the Innovate F-Lite 235 V3 to the Innovate F-Lite 260 V2 to the Innovate F-Lite G300. This is taking me like five tries to get through all these names, but we nailed it. That being said, I'm going to be talking about where all these shoes excel the most in my opinion and talk about some construction differences. Because all these shoes are cross training shoes and they work in CrossFit and lifting settings, not all these shoes feel the same. They're all very different with their construction, which is then good because then we can make the best educated buying decision for our needs and wants. But that being said, let's dive in to our first topic. Our first topic is which is the best shoe for CrossFit? So I will say all these models work for CrossFit and they actually all have construction features designed to promote performance and durability in this setting, but they all do feel slightly differently. So I'm gonna talk about some differences that will hopefully help you make the best decisions per your needs. So if you are a CrossFit focused athlete and you want something very minimalist that has a lower heel to toe drop, the Innovate F-Lite 235 V3 is going to be your call. This model has a very breathable and lightweight mesh upper, has that dynamic fascia band on the outsole so it feels very maneuverable, and overall with the four millimeter heel toe drop, you feel very close to the ground in this model. This shoe is like what I would compare to like almost like feeling like a sock on the foot. So if you like training with that style of footwear, this will be the best model for you. The Innovate F-Lite 260 V2 has a eight millimeter heel toe drop. That means that this shoe has a bit more heel compared to these other two. So if you are that CrossFit focused athlete that likes having a bit more heel and you like having a slightly higher heel position when you're training, then this will be a good model for you. This model also has the dynamic fascia band. We have that rope tech on the midsole and this shoe actually has some beefed up upper construction throughout the toe box, the rope cage here and the heel to promote its overall durability. The Innovate F-Lite G300 is also another good option. However, where I think this model differs is with the overall midfoot support it provides. This shoe doesn't have that ridge here in the midfoot. It's a bit more flat in nature. So if you do want an Innovate shoe that will provide you with a slightly more stable base, this could be a really good model to look into. It features a six millimeter heel toe drop, has this TPU heel cage here for additional rope climbing support. And as a whole, the Innovate F-Lite G300 is a pretty good model to tackle a little bit of everything, but also provide you with enough midfoot support in CrossFit training if that is something you're looking into with your Innovate training shoes. Our next topic is which model is best for lifting. So if you just want one of these shoes for going to the gym and tackling recreational lifts with, which is gonna be best, which is gonna provide you the most stability, etc. So all these models will be plenty stable under a variety of loads. I have trained over 455 in all these shoes and as a whole, they all do a pretty phenomenal job at limiting compression. The Innovate F-Lite 235 V3 and 260 V2 both have the power flow midsole that Innovate uses in a lot of their cross training shoes. And as you can see, it's like this like medium to high density foam midsole. It doesn't compress too much. So across the board, these models will be awesome for lifting. And in the Innovate F-Lite G300, we also have like this high density foam midsole throughout. The overall stack height is a bit higher throughout in the Innovate F-Lite G300, but as a whole, it is a pretty phenomenal shoe for lifting as well. Now, which is the best model for lifting? That really comes down to, once again, how you want your shoe to fit. If you like having a more minimalist shoe, go with the Innovate F-Lite 235 V3. If you want a bit more height with your heel, the Innovate F-Lite G300 and Innovate F-Lite 260 V2 are really good options. What I will say is this, the Innovate F-Lite 260 V2's toe box is a tad bit narrow compared to the G300. So if you do want a slightly higher heel position, this may be the better model to look into. But as a whole, if you're looking into one of these shoes for lifting and not necessarily specific for CrossFit or any other form of activity, you should have plenty of stability in all of these models. All right, so now let's discuss which is the best for versatile training. So this would include like athletic focus workouts, HIIT training, plyometrics, etc. So my favorite model is the Innovate F-Lite 235 V3. However, I just like how maneuverable and how lightweight this shoe is. It feels like literally nothing on the foot. And I think if you are tackling any form of activity where you're gonna be on the toes a lot, or if you want something lightweight for a longer duration session, the Innovate F-Lite 235 V3 is an awesome option. The 260 V2 is also a really good option. However, I did find that the heel being a bit higher than these other two models, and then the midfoot being a bit more narrow, it was kind of off-putting and I think if you have a wider or flatter foot, you might not actually like this shoe for versatile training because of the overall drop and the midfoot construction. You might feel like this shoe is lacking support 
for your specific foot anatomy needs. Now, when it comes to the Innovate FLY G300, I also like this model for more versatile training. The shoe has a booty construction, and as a whole, it breathes fairly well. It has a slightly wider base down here for a bit more midfoot support. So if you are somebody who wants a bit more support and you don't like having something so like, minimalist in nature and you like having a bit more of like a rigid midfoot structure go for the innovate fly g300 but that all being said these shoes will all work for versatile training and i want to make that incredibly clear but there are specific fit differences that i think will help each of these shoes excel for your specific anatomy and training needs so when it comes to sizing and fit in all of these shoes, most lifters and athletes should be safe going true to size. Now it is important to note that generally Innovate training shoes and Innovate shoes in general tend to run a bit more narrow. On their Innovate fit scale, all of these shoes have a five. That means that they are technically the widest that Innovate creates. However, I do think that if you have a flatter or wider foot, you still might feel a little bit limited in some of these models. For example, in the 260 V2, I do not think this is a great model for those with flatter or wider feet, especially through the midfoot. And if you do have a wider or flatter foot, then you may want to look into the 235 V3 as the upper has a bit more stretch to it, or the G300 here, because the upper and just the overall sole construction, I think is a bit more accommodating for like a wider forefoot. If you have the, once again, a wider or flatter foot, especially through the midfoot, then you may find that these models are all pretty uncomfortable for your needs. And you may want to look into cross training shoes that fit your foot its anatomy a little bit better. All right, so now let's talk about a couple of similarities between all three of these shoes. So the first similarity is that all these shoes have rope tech in them. So basically, Innovate uses this rope tech feature here, which is a medial and lateral wrap throughout the midfoot to support the overall shoe's performance and durability when climbing ropes. The second similarity is their outsole construction. So in the Innovate F-Lite 235 V3 and 260 V2, we have this dynamic fascia band throughout. So as you can see, we have almost like this tread patterning that almost replicates the plan or fascia of the foot. In the G300, it's not as apparent. However, you can still see that we do have a little bit of that patterning through the forefoot and midfoot. And then they all have the Metaflex up here in the forefoot. That's this line going across to give these shoes toe boxes a nice level of maneuverability. The third similarity is that all of these shoes are pretty lightweight in nature. So Innovate makes their names of their shoes based on their weight. So the 235, 260, and 300 is lightest, pretty light, and then somewhat light. So all these shoes are fairly lightweight in nature and they will feel very breathable. So that is another similarity that you can expect with these models, just overall construction. But now let's talk about a couple of differences. All right, so two major differences that you can expect with all three of these shoes is number one, their heel to toe drop. So in the FLY 235 V3, we have a four millimeter heel to toe drop. In the 260 V2, we have an eight millimeter drop. And then in the G300, we have a six millimeter drop. This gives all these shoes a slight Slightly different feel based on how the toe and the heel interact with one another and how they are positioned in the shoe. The second difference is that in the G300, we have a booty construction, so there is no separate tongue, whereas the 235 V3 and 260 V2 have the separate tongue construction. It has that more like traditional training shoe feel. Overall, those are like the two major differences between these shoes that really give them their difference in feeling and fit when training. There are obviously other subtle construction differences throughout, but those are the two that I think are the most important to note and understand. All right, so now let's go over the constructions of all three of these shoes. So up here on the toe, they all have an extended outsole layer that wraps up. In the 235 V3 and 260 V2, the wrap is a little bit wider in nature, whereas in the G300, it's a bit more skinny in nature. However, this hasn't had any issues with lipping because as you can see, like we have some pretty big stitching throughout. So as a whole, I think that the outsole wraps on each model are fairly durable. If we look at the upper toe box construction here, in the 260 V2, this is the middle model, right here we have an additional layering right here for additional support in the 235 v3 we have additional support but it's not as heavy in nature as the 260 v2 and then in the g300 we actually don't have any like synthetic layers with an overlay here but we do have a slightly thicker upper construction here which overall i think does help feed into this model's durability Looking at the midsole in each shoe, we have the PowerFlow midsole throughout in the 235 V3. In the 260 V2, we also have a very similar-esque 
sole construction, especially throughout the midsole and outsole here as the 235 V3. And then in the G300, we have a slightly higher stack height, but we have a similar-esque construction when it comes to the density of the foam used in this model's midsole. Looking at each shoe's midfoot, so in the 260 V2 over here, we have one, two, three, four, five eyelets that run up, a sixth back here for lace lock. In the G300, we have one, two, three, four, five eyelets in total, and we have this plastic TPU cage throughout the midfoot here. And then in the 235 V3, we have one, two, three, four, five, six eyelets that run up and a seventh back here for lace lock. When looking at the overall outsole constructions, as discussed earlier, they all have this like dynamic fascia band wrapping up throughout the outsole here, going into the forefoot. However, in the G300, we have that graphene construction on the outsole, which makes it a bit more flat in nature. And that's why we also get a bit more midfoot support here, as there is no midfoot ridge that we get in the 235 V3 and the 260 V2. So looking at the upper constructions, all these models have a pretty breathable mesh throughout with additional materials like the heel back here and the 260 V2 to provide more support and stability. And then as mentioned in our differences sections, the 260 V2 and 235 V3 both have separate tongues, whereas the G300 has this booty construction. All of these models have removable insoles, and as a whole, I think that's kind of the essence of all these shoes' constructions. Now, obviously, there are other subtle details that I did not mention, so check out the individual reviews if you are interested in those. But if you have any additional questions, make sure you drop a comment down below. All right, guys, that wraps up this comparison of the Innovate F Flight 235 V3, F Flight 260 V2, and F Flight G300. Hopefully I was able to answer some of your questions that you may have had about all of these models. As a whole, they're all really good versatile training shoes, but they each have a slightly different feel. If you have any questions about any of these models, drop a comment down below or reach out to me personally. And as always guys, drop a like on the video, drop subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the next one.